Good evening and welcome to Story by the Audible African Woman Kenya Election Series. We are excited to be having this conversation. Again, if you have heard what we've been speaking about, we've been speaking about how do young women in Kenya experience elections. And today I have a very amazing guest that I know is a key player not only in the democratic processes in Kenya, in governance elections, but also uh, has risen to be one of the youngest top directors in this country, uh, Ms. Banis Mburu Mbuki. My name is Mbuki Mburu. I'm a public policy and youth development advocate. And of course, Nyambura has talked about I'm the youngest director. Yes, I'm yes, the youngest yes. director at uh, Kimisitu Sako, board of director. And I'm excited because, um, you know, just engaging young people, we realize that, you know what, the young people are critical in engaging the economy. And so I thought about how do we organize better and cooperatives are, that, uh, are those spaces. And that's how I went to vie for director at Kimi City Circle. Congratulations again. We are so happy to be having the youngest director, woman youngest director in our podcast. Now, thank you. I've also seen you in, very involved. I saw you uh, examining manifestos. I saw you talking about uh, the place of youth and young people uh, in terms of the election processes. Now, people tend to think that, you know, uh, women and youth only come, are only viable or only spoken about when it comes to elections. But I think one of the things we need to uh, uh, understand is, one, I need you to demystify what we, when we say democratic processes away from elections, what do those look like? But also, what is the role of women in uh, voter mobilization, especially during uh, active election years like this, like this one? Great. Thank you so much for your question. And when you're talking about democratic processes, and, and when I'm, democratic is, is a long process because people always think democracy is just at the election, at the ballot. But there's more to that. So when you elect that leader, um, what happens? Because you remember that leader is representing you. You've basically put in your power to that person. So mm. basically you have to hold them accountable and you're talking about public participation, uh, participating in the, uh, you, you know, in the processes of, uh, for example, legislative, if, for example, if there's a policy development, uh, you know, you need to participate in that, in bills of parliament, and of course, any budgetary processes. Now we are ha having elections, the next thing is a county integrated development plan. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, we have a bigger vision as a country. We have the Vision 2030 and we have the medium term plan. And that's why, for me, it was very critical to participate in the manifesto because the next government will be implementing Media Term Plan 4. And for us, is what is their manifesto as a party? Are they looking at the development in a bigger picture of what we had as Vision 2030? But also, most importantly, if you look at uh, Medium Term 3, uh, young people weren't mm. there. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why you find that even as, as uh, you know, where you find young people in terms of, for example, the creative industry, the small, mid and medium enterprises, they are not very, um, you know, put in, the, there's no government effort to be able to encourage them. So for me, I was like, okay, you know, I have been in the development space um, in terms of youth development for about six years now, going to seven years. And for me, I felt like, you know what, I've been left out. You look at leadership, talk about budgeting, talking mm. about, you know, the critical sectors of this economy. Lead, uh, in terms of public service, yeah. 2% of young people are in senior management. Mm. And less than 10% in terms of public service generally. Yeah. And and so for me, if we, if we don't have young people in public service, then we'll be left with a country we don't know how to run. Yeah. So it's very critical for us as young people to be able to say this is our country and how do we want this country to look like. Um, and, and of course, we can all be in public service, but then also the government needs to facilitate all other sectors of economy to ensure that, you know what, these young people are taking charge. And, and for me, so many young people and, and of course my peers were like, okay, that was a major move. How comes you, you're from the, you know, from the... Private sector. The, the, you're from the... Civil society. Civil society, yeah. sorry. And then you've shifted to private sector. And, and for me, it was like, okay, we need to think about how do we transition and, and bring our movements of young people into the different spaces because that's where the voices of young people matter the development, the economy. Um, and, and when we are talking about, for example, what you asked me about democratic processes, I would urge my fellow young people, and especially also young women, is to say that, you know, uh, county integrated development plans have been developed right now. Uh, and after that, we'll have annual development plans. Um, how do we ensure that our priorities are there in terms of budgeting, uh, budgeting gender responsive? Mm. Because remember, mm. if the budget does not take care of women specifically. There are no are other the, spaces. Yes. Yeah. And we are the biggest culprits. Yeah. If we are talking about access to water, 
very hardly will you see food security men. which is, which has become a very big issue exactly yeah so you will find that women will spend a lot of their time going to fetch water or going to look for food um and and yet we would have prioritized that in the budgeting mm. so it's really critical for us to be able to participate in these processes and that's what i was talking about democratic process remember you have the power on the vote but whoever you elect also will have um a lot of influence in in what will go into the budget in the legislative processes so you must hold them accountable and it's very critical for you to be able to say you know what i have the power through and through and how do i ensure that this person who i've elected has the best interest for me i listened to you speaking and then i remember what there's a research that went on that where um only 1% of funds this was globally went to women uh, uh, on, uh owners of SMEs so mm-hmm. my question is we have had a lot of affirmative uh funds you know in the previous governments yes um uh, what is your take uh, yeah, we, we, and and this this i ask because you you come from both worlds where we talk about uh reduction of poverty but also in the private sector where affirmative funds around you know the support of SMEs is very important what, what if you were to project a future of you know inclusivity uh, and, and an economic model that is inclusive what what would that look like for young women and you know and and youth in general it's interesting you've talked about the um, the funds and and then of course i've done a lot of work around affirmative action fund because most of these affirmative action funds were developed to support young people mm. and and of course uh kibaki's government came in to uh, with the youth fund which was actually the most progressive um you know ways of supporting young people in fact other african countries came to benchmark kenya oh is this so yes yes but the only challenge was um after kibaki's government there was a need to put you know another government came they want to do a weather fund another one women fund so it becomes so many duplicative affirmative mm, action fund yeah. and then the government was like wait these funds are actually running the funds is a whole lot of operation cost in, in terms of budget and all yes, yeah in terms and, of and resource human resource yeah yeah so how do we ensure that um we we can still you know we can still have these funds but then have minimal operation cost so there have been conversation around biashara kenya fund of which um young people through the youth summit organizations have been able to mobilize around but there was a challenge because remember all these funds are set up through an act of parliament how do you close down all the acts of parliament in march so that ah, was the procedure the yeah. yeah there's a whole procedure that was left out so in terms of affirmative action fund there's a challenge in terms of operations and also every government wanting to form their own fund because they want to be unique in their own ways uh in their own ways of also seeing it's how it's almost like support. a legacy project yes legacy yeah. project quick legacy yeah. project giving yeah. out money dishing yeah. out money and everything mm. but there's no sustainability mm. model you've talked about the global you know 1% being uh going to women and um if you look at the previous administration that we've had in this country is that the SME sector has really struggled mm. and so um there's uh you know big companies have sort of thrived and and i think in 2019 um there was a there was a research that was done and it showed 2000 SMEs closed down oh that's a big number and unfortunately again covid happened during you know almost the same time um i think beginning of 2020 uh covid happened and so more SMEs struggled because you know of course um an SME is just uh you know small it's it hasn't really picked yes, there's no yes. sustainability model for some years yes. so most SMEs struggle but also there are more that were formed and and when you're talking about funds is some other institutions have come up and realized you know what Kenyans are very entrepreneurial mm, which is true yeah the yeah. majority of us the reality is the inequality in this country is so big that we have to look for the means yeah yeah and so you find there are very few people at the top and so many of us you know at the bottom and therefore the SMEs would really thrive because we as like SMEs really would work for us and that's why you'll find that it's actually a way of life in Kenya like yeah. I, I feel like even if you it's working, a way of life yeah you always have something else going on which is a small skill SME of sorts yeah. exactly and mm. that's why you'll find a majority of Kenyans will go to a kiosk next to them really do they go to supermarkets of this course people go to supermarkets mm. elite will go but most kenyans actually go to the next kiosk and that's why the unga discussion was like okay you've dropped the unga in supermarkets 
are you asking about the kiosk next to that true. person? Yeah, yeah. You know, also, that's how economies are sustained in terms of local economies. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you will find that this, what is the impact? Are the government interventions really affecting the people? You know, and that's why you'll find that the SMEs were really struggling. And I was talking about how an international institution has come into Kenya and told the banks, you know what? If you give money to SMEs, we're happy to give you insurance because they are sure that these SMEs will be able to repay back the loan. Mm. And the banks have really gone for that, um, you know, that fund, you know, an international fund coming yeah. into yeah. a country to support SMEs. That tells you there's a problem. The government is not investing the, the in yes. yes. The the government is not uh, investing in SMEs, so it's really thinking about how do we invest more in SMEs and and, and even right now when talking about democratic processes, it's really to look at the government that we really invest in the people at the you know at the SME level, um, and really ensuring that these SMEs are supported to be able to grow bigger because this country we've declared ourselves a middle income. Yes. Are we really middle income? Especially if the most vulnerable main, I mean, can only become more vulnerable and more poor. Exactly. So, so that's the question, really. And, and, and when you say that, my mm -hmm. question is, um, n as a middle uh, income, income country, and, and the, 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 the picture you've painted about SMEs, do you think women voters feel, because economy is one of the ways that we respond to, you know, uh, whether a government is good for us or not, right? The growth mm -hmm. of economy, but also our place in it, right? Yes. So do you think young women and youth feel represented in terms of, or actually feel in incentivized to uh, vote, you know, in terms of whoever, whoever, whoever takes the day? It's very interesting. This election is very, very interesting because... Uh, previously, you know, we've had how women have, you know, have influenced how a country is in terms of even culture. They are the custodians of culture. But then since our propagation of the 2010 constitution, I think this will be a major shift. Uh, apart from the 2002. Mm. You know, 2002 mm. was like, you know, let's mobilize and remove this regime. Yes. But I think for me, this particular election is very interesting because, um, from the 2010 constitution, I think this is where we'll see the impact of women participation in all angles mm. in terms of, you know, vying. More women have come out to vie. Yeah, this and is also true. youth, yeah. they have come out to vie. Mm -hmm. Also, this elections, we will see more women and youth winning this seat. This is good. <laughs> and even I've seen that more women and youth will actually, will be able to mobilize for turnout. Mm. Women have come to realize that, you know what, actually these issues are more of our issues more than anyone else. This is true. If there is no provision of service delivery, think about education, for example. If that child does, doesn't access education, they go back to, to, um, to you know, destabilize the mom. Yeah. Like the mom yeah. is the one who, like, oh, yeah, Households, my... In, most household, of the household income, I mean, you know, decisions fall on women. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's really for women have realized, you know what, I've even been in, you know, in Kamukunjis with women and they're like, you know what, Sisi, to not vote mama all the way, mm, you know. Mm. So it's, it's a conversation that it doesn't matter where, who mama is, whether it's MCA, MP, but at least that woman is realizing, you know what, this woman, when we have women in power, in leadership, then they will be able to resonate with our issues. And, and I'm happy that, you know, as much as we had a campaign in 2013, about voting what, women yeah. because of course the two that gender rule hasn't been realized no, and we've been struggling on the implementation yeah. but then now women are realizing you know what if we don't take up upon ourselves to be able to actually achieve the two that gender Away from, rule from the frameworks yeah. apart from the frameworks then we, we it's not going to be realized and I'm happy that this election will be one of those that will be able to change uh, you know the trajectory and I'm hoping for more women in parliament or in the different seats. You sound very helpful. You, I mean, I, I mean, you sound very hopeful. I said, I meant hopeful, not helpful. You sound very <laughs> yes, hopeful. Yes, I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful because I believe women will be able to transform this country and will be able to, you know, change beyond the legislative. And I'm happy that, you know, we've started with, for example, the CJ. 
Mm, you yes. know, it's also motivation for us. And even having more women vying for different seats. Um, you know, for example, the presidential candidates, we have two, you know, running mates uh, from two major parties. So I think... Um, it, it does matter when women see other women doing well at the top, right? Exactly, exactly. And I just got a tweet um, just the other day of, of uh, one of the presidential running mates saying, you know what, women are actually taking up this position legitimately. And by and, merit, away and, from affirmative action and quotas. Exactly. This so I am area. very hopeful that this election will be that. As we are transitioning government, we are also transitioning in terms of women and gender representation in this country. Thank you very much, Mukimboro. We have enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for your insights because one of the things I like about you is that you're able to mar merge the, uh, you know, the private sector experience, but also the civil society experience, which is very rare, especially rare on a young woman. So congratulations again and thank you for coming. This has been Swaiba, the Audible African Woman Kenya election series. Um, with your host, Nyambura Mundia, Asante Nisana. Please subscribe, share, and Muki, we hope to see you again. See you soon. Yeah, see you soon. Thank Asante. you.